What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and I know you guys are probably typing away. Typing away in the comments section. JD, what is The Undertaker doing on your layout? What is he doing on your background, your thumbnail for Monday Night Raw review? Well, number one, I'm in an Undertaker-type mood. Number two, it's WrestleMania season. Why the fuck not? Number three... My supporter and follower of this channel, big supporter and follower of this channel, Mike, okay, he does my WWE thumbnails along with the other beast who helps me out on this channel when it comes to WWE content, and that is Mr. Isaac, man, both guys, huge, a vital, fucking unbelievable part of my WWE content right here on YouTube.com without these guys and their creative genius and their fucking artistic vision i would not have wwe content that looks this good man so i want to give a huge shout out uh to mike and isaac for all their wwe love and giving me my wwe needs right here on youtube.com in the form of these beautiful thumbnails and layouts man thank you guys so much if you guys want to go follow them please i will link both of them in the description below go check them out and go support them man because they are a vital part of what I do here for my WWE content. This is your Monday Night Raw review for this week's show. February 23rd, 2015. I don't know if it was a Monday Night Raw or if it was... Let's suck Roman Reigns cock night. I don't know. Let's kiss his ass night. I don't know what was going on, man. But I'll tell you this. I knew... This was coming. I just didn't know how desperate WWE really was when it came to getting Roman Reigns over. It reeked of desperation. It reeked of, you know what? This is our last ditch effort before WrestleMania. We have five weeks to go before this monumental championship match between Reigns and Lesnar. Let's lay it on thick, man. So thick. That I literally wanted to fucking vomit all over my rug, man. All over everything that was in a fucking 10 foot distance of me, man. I want to just fucking hurl, vomit, puke. That's how fucking disgusting Monday Night Raw was with this segment with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, alright? Now, listen, I was the first to say on my Fast Lane review that Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns had a great match. I went even, you know, to the point of saying that Roman Reigns had the best singles match of his young career with Daniel Bryan. Fuck, Daniel Bryan can make a cardboard cutout of Rosie O'Donnell look like the best wrestler in the world. That's how great Daniel Bryan is. Daniel Bryan calls a good match, okay? Roman Reigns was in sync and in tune with what was going on that night. Whether he was the right choice to win, I'm going to leave it up to you guys, man. You either fucking wanted Reigns or you didn't want Reigns. You wanted Brian or you didn't want Brian. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You guys know where my allegiance lies, and that's with Team Brian, okay? But I knew what WWE was doing weeks before this match was even booked, okay? And then they finally made it legit and all official, and I knew Daniel Bryan was going to be the scapegoat. I knew Daniel Bryan was going to be the sheep. I knew Daniel Bryan was going to be the puppet that Vince McMahon has dangling from his strings. That's all Daniel Bryan was, man, on Sunday and then on Monday Night Raw. Daniel Bryan using the word sir to Roman Reigns. Listen, I don't give a fuck where you think Daniel Bryan belongs on the card on WrestleMania, whether you think he belongs in the main event, or if you really want to see him go against a Ziggler or a Sheamus. You know, Daniel Bryan shouldn't be calling anyone, sir. Roman Reigns should be the one calling Daniel Bryan, sir. He should be ushering Daniel Bryan and showering Daniel Bryan with such admiration and respect, okay? I don't understand where Daniel Bryan has to come off and say, Listen, sir. Really? I don't understand that. And then he gives his thumbs up to Roman Reigns. He gives his approval of Roman Reigns. In which Daniel Bryan cut an amazing promo, man. Probably one of the best 
I've ever seen from Daniel Bryan. It was legit. Everything he was saying was true. And then it got down to, all right, let me get down on my hands and knees and suck your cock, Mr. Roman Reigns. Sir, please, please, do you have a napkin so I can finish wiping my mouth after I'm done sucking your fucking cock? Really? And you guys, oh, JD, you're using such harsh language. This is a Monday Night Raw review from the eyes of a real wrestling fan, man. I don't give a fuck if I'm professional. This is what we do here. This is what we do here, man. If you don't like my opinion of the WWE product, and if you don't like my direction, please go watch somebody else who's going to be all proper and sit in front of a microphone. Oh, well, this is what happened on Monday Night Raw. Roman Reigns was put over by Daniel Bryan in, in, in a great segment. From Nashville, Tennessee, Roman Reigns will now go on to fight Brock Lesnar at the W, uh, at WrestleMania 31, whatever, man, whatever, you wanna go watch some fucking goon, please, this is what really happened, man, this is what I'm thinking when I'm watching Monday Night Raw, and I know for a fucking fact, you guys were thinking the same goddamn fucking thing, oh, there's JD with the fucking F-bomb, fuck, okay, it fucking sucked, man, it made me wanna fucking vomit all over my TV, okay, no way should have this this been penned. There's no way this should have been booked. I understood what they were doing. Yes, Daniel Bryan. They were going to use Daniel Bryan to get Roman Reigns over. But fucking Christ. Can you get any more desperate? And that's not even the end of it. That is not even the end of it. Paul Heyman, of all people, come out. And, again, gets on his hands and knees, and he needed a fucking, a bigger napkin, a bigger towel, than Daniel Bryan did. You're telling me, you're telling me Paul Heyman agreed to go out there and say what he said last night? I was in shock. I was in legit shock, man. You're the man. You're the man. You're it right now. Sir. He even used the word sir. If it was down to Roman Reigns and Steve Austin in 1998, I'm going to take Roman Reigns. If it was down to Roman Reigns and The Rock in 1999, I'm going to take Roman Reigns. Did anyone hear those words come out of Paul Heyman's mouth, or am I just fucking delusional? Is Vince McMahon really that fucking desperate? How can you even, how can you even have a pen? A pen, reach the fucking paper, and have that written on that sheet of paper, man. How, 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 please tell me. How can you allow such blasphemy, such profanity to be written on your script for Paul Heyman, of all people, to go out there and say in front of 14,000 fucking people live, in front of three or four million other people watching in the comfort of their own home, you know what it made me do? Blech. All over the fucking place. All over the place, man. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And then what was Roman Reigns' rebuttal? Please, Paul. Please, Paul. Tell me again how I can't do it. How I can't slay the beast. You can't. It's not a matter if, if you're ready, okay? Please. I'll tell you all day, straight to your face. You're not ready. You can't do it. You can't do it. The only people that believe you can do it is Vince McMahon and Triple H. That's it. Everybody else, I don't give a fuck who you are. And I don't give a fuck how many people want to come to me. Well, JD, Daniel Bryan can't do it either. Oh, well, CM Punk certainly hung around with Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam a few years back. You're telling me that Brock Lesnar and Daniel Bryan can't do the same fucking thing? I understand, and I'm going to be level-headed, okay? I understand where a lot of you guys are coming from. A lot of these people that I watch religiously every week, I understand where these people are coming from in terms of Roman Reigns. I understand it. I, I truly understand it. You know, I, I, I'm not a dummy, but it's not his time. It's not a matter of if he can do it. It's a matter of he can do it, but not right now. Not now. That's my gripe. Daniel Bryan had his moment last year. Fine. He doesn't need to be the underdog again. Fine. But when it comes down to it, WrestleMania, the showcase of the immortals, like they say, 
What do you want headlining your main event? Your fucking huge show. The one show that people associate with your company every year. Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar? Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar. Please. It's not fucking rocket science, folks. It's not rocket science. It's going to be a fight between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. It's going to be a fight. And I've seen the physicality and I've seen the intensity that Roman Reigns has showed. The last two nights I've seen it on Fastlane and the Monday Night Raw. Okay? Roman Reigns didn't do anything uh, to the point where I had to just fucking roll my eyes in the back of my fucking head and say, you know what, I gotta change the channel. I can't listen to this fucking guy. He hasn't done that in two weeks. And I hope that continues. Okay? Great match at Fastlane with Daniel Bryan. And last, uh, last night. Uh, it is last night because it's Tuesday. You guys are gonna be seeing us on Wednesday. On Monday Night Raw... He really didn't do anything out of the ordinary that made me say, you know what, this guy fucking sucks. Promo was okay. He didn't stutter. He didn't fucking trip over his words. I just don't appreciate WWE making a fan. You guys, fans. Fucking vomit. The dinner that you had a couple of hours before Monday Night Raw went on the air. I just don't believe it. I, I really don't understand how you can utter Steve Austin and Roman Reigns in the same sentence. The Rock and Roman Reigns in the same sentence. I, I really don't understand that. Fine. We're going to get Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Fine. Vince McMahon is fucking thrilled. He's thrilled. I hope to God San Francisco buries that main event. I really do. And this is not being sour. And this is not being upset over the fact Daniel Bryan didn't get it. I don't give a fuck anymore, man. It's just not right. It's just not right. Can you imagine if Daniel Bryan was the one to go on to fight Brock Lesnar? And Roman Reigns just had a little bit more time to be seasoned, right? And then eventually later this year, he would get a WWE Championship match against maybe Daniel Bryan. You know? And take what they did at Fastlane and just magnify that and make it better. Because Roman Reigns would have another six to seven months under his belt, man. Can you imagine the show that they would have put on if Roman Reigns was actually ready? Roman Reigns is not ready, folks. There's a multitude of reasons for me to go over, and I've said this many fucking times on here, why he's not ready. And I'm not just going to repeat myself anymore. I'm just not. You guys should know why he's not ready. I don't have to go over it again. All right? That's my gripe with it, man. Desperation on Vince McMahon's part. How many fucking times must you prove to be so desperate to get this man over? Okay? And the match with uh, Rollins and Orton, it wasn't bad. Was, I wish it was given a little bit more time. And Reigns and Bryan's interaction last night with the hot tags, or the inopportune tags, I should say, with Roman Reigns smiling, just making light of the whole thing. He's got his, he's got his approval from Daniel Bryan. That's great, man. That's great. Great job about using the number one guy in the company right now to get someone over that half of the fucking fans don't give a shit about. And it's true. Nobody gives a shit about Roman Reigns except for the fucking young people in the crowd, the fucking women and the young girls who think he's super hot, man. Fuck out of here. I don't watch WWE. I don't watch their champion because he's super hot. I want to see someone like Brian go out there and fucking fight and defend and prove that he's the fucking best wrestler in the world. We're not going to get none of that with Roman Reigns. We're going to get Mr. Cena 2.0, Mr. Pretty Boy, Mr. Chosen One, because he's got a huge family lineage that WWE can't seem to overlook. It's true, people. It's true. You don't like what I'm saying? Go grab a fucking tissue, wipe your tears, or just fucking click the video off, because it's true. That's all I'm saying about that. Fucking let's suck Roman Reigns cock night on Monday Night Raw. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. Transitioning over to uh, Randy Orton. I, I, There's another thing I don't understand. Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. Okay, Randy Orton's been out for how many how many months now? Five months? Six months? I don't know. I don't know. When was the last time he actually stepped foot in a WWE ring? I, I really can't even fucking tell you. But all I know is that what Seth Rollins did to him, what the authority did to him, you know, right before he went off TV... Listen, man, I don't know. If someone's going to fucking beat the living shit out of me, I'm going to come back to the WWE when it's my time to come back, and I'm going to, number one, plain and simple, seek revenge. What does WWE do? Killed Randy Orton before they even get to WrestleMania. 
Okay, he had a lukewarm reception in Memphis because uh, the fast lane crowd was absolutely fucking dreadful beyond repair. And number two, he came out on Monday Night Raw with a decent reaction, decent pop. I would have had him slay the authority one by one leading up to WrestleMania until he got to Seth Rollins. Now, what does WWE want to script into the show? All right, Randy Orton, we'll sit down with the authority. We'll, we'll mend all these fucking frustrations. We'll sit down. Everything will be cool. Cooler heads will prevail. And Randy Orton will once again be on the side of the authority. After they just told this fucking story, before he went away, he got his fucking head crushed in by Seth Rollins, and now all of a sudden he wants to be best buddies with Seth Rollins? I understand this for a heel. I understand this for a heel character, which Randy Orton was not. Before he went away, he was clearly a face. It wasn't fully face, but he was about 90% there. So now what does WWE do? I don't know what the fuck they're doing, man. They're, they're kind of making him in between. People want to cheer him, but now they don't fucking know because half of the fucking idiots watching don't understand A and B, but I understand what they're doing. Randy Orton should have been immediately thrusted back into this program with revenge on his mind. Fuck this bullshit, man. And then all of a sudden, he, he RKO's one of J&J security on Monday Night Raw. And then when it gets to Rollins, <laughs> pat on the back and then walks away. Really? If I was Orton, I would have fucking put this guy's skull through the ring post. I understand that they're trying to slow build it. And get you reintroduced with the program because WWE thinks their fans are fucking retarded. They don't understand that people like us, they, we realized what happened months ago before Orton went away. Some of these people watching, oh, that real that happened? I didn't know that. So WWE's scripting all this to kind of revisit it, tell you the story all over again that they fucking did six months ago just to get you guys ready for WrestleMania so Orton can... Fully say, you know what, fuck the authority, I'm gonna be on my own, I'm playing mind games with Seth Rollins, he thinks I'm his friend, but I'm gonna fucking backstab him, blah, 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 how unoriginal can you get? This is why Orton is so fucking stale, because WWE gives him the same repetitive, lame, cheesy, unoriginal bullshit every fucking feud, please. If you wanted Orton over, people want to see him fucking exact revenge. People want to see Orton brutalize Seth Rollins. Keep them away from each other. Have him go through every member of the authority until he finally gets Rollins at WrestleMania. And then give us a match that we all know these two can fucking put on. Fucking have him destroy the Big Show. Put him through a fucking table. Put him through a ring post, man. Fucking kendo stick his fucking skull so we don't see him anymore. I don't know. Give me the fucking insane Viper who all I hear, uh, you know, is a fucking lunatic or voices in my head. That's the Orton I want to see, man. Not this fucking bullshit. Really? Uncreative fucking garbage. True. And this is from someone who is a WWE fan who sees it all. And I know you guys agree with me. You have to agree with me. I'm not talking out my fucking ass here. WWE creative completely has fucked Randy Orton immediately before we even get to WrestleMania. Five weeks to go before WrestleMania. They got me feeling, I don't fucking care about this, but I know why they're doing it. They think the fans are fucking retarded, and they want to revisit this story to get everybody familiarized with it so Orton can make his big turn, which he did already. People were cheering him already. Now he's back with the authority, so now he's going to be associated with them. And, oh, all right, it's Randy Orton. And then, then they're going to wait for the big pop, and, you know, the match at WrestleMania is going to be uh, official one week before the fucking show. Give me a fucking break. Man, WWE is so fucking garbage. Absolutely garbage when it comes to fucking big storylines, man. That was the problem with Monday Night Raw. The big storylines suffered. You got Roman Reigns, cock being sucked by Daniel Bryan and Brock Lesnar. And, uh, not Brock Lesnar. I know Brock Lesnar would never do that. Which I got news on Brock Lesnar on, uh, on Friday. Big fucking happenings with Lesnar. I'm still trying to investigate and see what's going on with that. He was supposed to be on the show, but he wasn't. Paul Heyman was there sucking his cock instead. Um, and then we got Randy Orton's scenario with Seth Rollins, which doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Whatever, man. It is what it is. WWE showing you why that they're fucking garbage, all right? Uh, moving on. We had uh, the promo package for Sting. Very well done. Very well done. That that actually 
piss me off, though. The, 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 the package itself didn't piss me off. The fucking happenings after the package pissed me off. Paige, in a 30-second match, a Divas match, a tag team match, Paige and Emma versus the Bella Twins, 30 fucking seconds. This is what you want. This is how you treat your fucking women. And I'm not even going to go into it because AJ Lee called out Stephanie McMahon on Twitter today. Uh, and uh, there was a hashtag going around uh, for the Divas. Get them on T. I don't know what the fuck the hashtag was. Let me see if I can fucking look it up here. What was the fucking hashtag? Can't fucking see it. I can't. I, I know it's here somewhere. I know it's in my notes somewhere. It's somewhere. I can't fucking find it. What is it? I don't even fucking know. Well, I'll give the divas a chance. That was the hashtag. And yeah, I don't understand how you how you're doing everything right with your women down at NXT, but when you're a WWE diva, this is how you get treated. Why would anyone on NXT want to move up except for monetary fucking reasons? I would stay in NXT. I don't come to the I don't come to the biggest fucking North American wrestling promotion to have 30 second matches on fucking Monday Night Raw. I, I really don't. I want to wrestle. I want to come on your flagship show and fucking show 4 million people watching that, you know what? I can fucking wrestle. 30 seconds? That shows you what WWE thinks of their fucking women. Nothing else, man. I don't give a fuck what they make. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit how you embarrass them with segments on TV. The fact that Paige, Paige and Emma, who is a very good wrestler in her own right, had 30 seconds on Monday Night Raw. That's what WWE did to the Divas right there. Garbage. WWE and everybody involved with booking this fucking show and that segment should have been fucking embarrassed, man. Absolutely fucking embarrassed. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Uh, the Ascension versus the Primetime Players. Well, the Ascension. WWE, what do they think of the Ascension? There you go. Primetime Players beat the Ascension last night. Intercontinental Championship Mix. I said it last night on Twitter. It's going to be Ziggler, Ambrose, Barrett, and I don't know how the fuck... Our truth got into the Intercontinental Championship mix. Please, someone remind me where our truth has been for the last, I don't know, four years. Now he's getting an Intercontinental Championship match because he beat Wade Barrett on SmackDown. Are you out of your fucking mind, man? How does WWE come up with this fucking garbage? You know what WWE should do? If they want to have a huge mix, a huge fucking... Uh, I, I don't know, an ensemble of individuals vying for the Intercontinental Championship. You got five weeks till WrestleMania. In those five weeks, you can assemble eight men and give us a fucking tournament. Two matches on Raw, two matches on SmackDown, etc., etc. The winner of this tournament gets to fight fucking Wade Barrett at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. If you want to build some prestige, I don't mind seeing tournaments, man. Tournaments are fucking awesome. The guys going through the struggle to get there, man. You got to win three fucking matches to get to WrestleMania. And boom, there you go. What am I hearing today? Oh, WWE might make the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal for the Intercontinental Championship. Fuck that. Fuck that. And I'll talk about that on Off the Script. What a dreadful fucking idea. Why the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is even fucking being talked about for WrestleMania is a fucking tragedy in itself, man. What did it do for Cesaro? Nothing. Why is it on the show, man? I'll talk about this on Off the Script. But if that's the idea WWE's going with, please. I don't want to. I don't want to complain anymore, man. It seems like all I did for fucking how long is this? Twenty four minutes. All I did was fucking complain. I don't want to do it. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. WWE are clueless. Absolutely clueless. Tyson Kidd and Cesaro again against the Usos. Like we didn't see that on the fucking pay per view. Bray Wyatt. And The Undertaker, I got news on The Undertaker. Undertaker might not even be showing up on Monday Night Raw at all. He may be just showing up at WrestleMania to fight Bray Wyatt. So I'll talk about that as well on Off The Script. I don't want to give too much information away because then you guys won't watch it anyway. So I want to save it all for Off The Script on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, John Cena and Rusev. Rusev, I'll say it again, and i said it many, many times before in the past. Rusev is really impressing me on the microphone. Okay, I, I really like his interaction with John Cena. I really like the, the, the comfort level that he's at right now. Lana does a great job. Rusev, I've said this, when Rusev was debuting, man, he was running through fucking scrubs. Rusev needs to speak for himself, and that's what they're doing. John Cena is the guy to get him over. I like it. It's going to turn into an American versus foreign thing at WrestleMania. I dig it. 
It's going to be for the United States title. Fine, but is John Cena going to put over Rusev at WrestleMania? I doubt it. Two pay-per-views in a row? Two pay-per-views in a row. I have a better chance of fucking banging Jennifer Lopez four times tonight than fucking John Cena putting over Rusev at WrestleMania. Simple. Simple as that. Okay? I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're I don't know why the match even happened the fast lane to begin with. It should have happened at WrestleMania. If you wanted to do it. And I even said it on my fast lane. I'm glad that this match happened that fast lane because in the smaller crowd, with the smaller atmosphere, it's gonna be a lot better. And it was a decent match at Fast Lane. I didn't expect it again to happen at WrestleMania. I was hoping WWE would switch it up, maybe a tag team match involve Sheamus, get Hogan involved. I don't fucking know. Something different. I don't want to see the same match again at WrestleMania, but that's apparently where we're going with that. But the interaction between Cena and Rusev was good. Cena was uh, all all uh, seriousness last uh, on Monday Night Raw. No games, no cheesiness. I like it. Rusev is really impressing me, and um, the interaction between both is very, very good as of late. All right, uh, Curtis Axel, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, man. I don't. I really don't know what they're doing with Curtis Axel. Axel Mania, um, the logic there with him and not being eliminated in the Royal Rumble, that was a good thing for the Royal Rumble on the night after the Royal Rumble, but now, please, just end it. End it. If you want to give Axel something to do, fine. I'm glad he's on TV. I'm glad we're seeing him. I think he's a, a, a decent talent. I think he could be successful if they give him something fucking good to work with, but... Enough is enough already, man. If you're going to have him go into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, I would love to see him win something like that, even though it will do nothing for him. I want to see him in some kind of spotlight. Enough with this fucking Axel Mania shit. Enough of being uh, not eliminated in the Royal Rumble and screwed in the Royal Rumble. It's over, man. It's over. All right? I love Curtis Axel. I think he's a great talent. But give the man something to do instead of fucking going out there and making a fool of himself, and nobody fucking cares on the other end, man. Give him something to do. Okay? You give an R truth a fucking shot at the IC title. Why not Axel? I don't understand it. But that's it. That's it for me, man. I I'm done complaining. That was your Monday Night Raw. Uh the, the big storylines were rushed and some some of the shit on Monday Night Raw just made me want to fucking vomit. Some logic holes there. There was big loopholes. I, I I don't know, man. WWE right now. Uh, WrestleMania does not have me excited. All I need to say is that WrestleMania does not have me excited. Let me know what you guys think about what WWE is doing to build WrestleMania. The only thing I'm really excited for is to see The Undertaker, see how he looks after following WrestleMania 30 and Brock Lesnar and the concussion, and then Sting versus Triple H, man. And then Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler, if that is actually happening. Those are the only things I'm looking forward to. But let me know what you guys think about WrestleMania. Let me know what you guys think about Monday Night Raw. Am I losing my mind? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comments below, all right? If you guys missed Off The Script last weekend, go check it out. Link is down below. If you guys missed Fast Lane Review, thank you for all the support on that. 17,000 views. Didn't come close to the Royal Rumble, but it's Fast Lane. We're going to do the same thing for WrestleMania, man. Go check it out if you missed it. Link is down below. If you guys want more additional wrestling content, Joe Cronin Show and the guys over at Chair Shot Reality, Labar, Eisenberg, Ghoulish, Go check those guys out. Links are down below. And don't forget to go follow Isaac and Mike down below as well, guys. This is JD. I'll be back with another explosive edition of WWE Off The Script. Your number one source for WWE news and rumors and WWE content in general right here on YouTube.com, guys. I'll see you on Friday. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys for Off The Script. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.